Five years ago, Elon Musk unveiled one of his grandest visions, a way to bring solar panels to the masses by installing them onto the roofs of buildings to generate electricity. He made a number of claims, which concluded with the aim of making the installation cheaper than traditional roofing. However, the project has been riddled with problems, such as poor customer service and the failure to roll out the project on a wider scale. Let's take a look at what went wrong. Tesla's first foray into the world of solar came with Solar City, a company founded in 2006 by Peter and Lyndon Rive, who were Elon Musk's cousins and backed by Musk, who served as chairman of the company. Solar City quickly established itself as the market leading company for residential solar in the United States and were the largest installer of solar panels in 2015. However, the acquisition of Solar City by Tesla in 2016 for $2.6 billion in cash ruffled feathers. At the time, the company was struggling financially, rolling out technology too fast and focusing on revenue over profits. Questions were asked if Solar City was about to go bankrupt or if it was part of a wider strategy, as Tesla and SpaceX both held bonds in the company, which it needed in order to survive. Musk has recently been on trial over the acquisition, which suggested there was a bailout. More on that later. Solar City's troubles started in 2015 when co founder Lyndon Rive said the company would have to focus on cutting costs after sinking a lot of money into infrastructure today, which would only benefit the company in two or three quarters' time. This saw the company lose its unicorn status as shares halved. Documents obtained at the lawsuit showed that Solar City was facing a cash crisis which could bankrupt the operation. A blog post on the company's website in 2016 announced that Tesla had bought out the company for $2.6 billion as part of a wider strategy. Musk told the Wall Street Journal that it formed part of his grand strategy to develop Tesla from a car maker to a creator and storage facility for energy. In a statement on the blog, the company reported that now is the right time to bring our two companies together. Tesla is getting ready to scale our Powerwall and Powerpack stationary storage products, and Solar City is getting ready to offer next generation differentiated solar solutions. Cue the lawsuit, which has dominated the newly named Tesla Energy. The suit centered around if Musk had influenced Tesla's board and misrepresented Solar City's financial position. He defended the acquisition as a bailout of the failing company and argued that there were in fact no financial issues. Roll back to May 2017 when Lyndon Reeve left the company as CEO and his co-founder, Peter Reeve, who was the chief technology officer, left only a few days later. To make matters worse, solar panels that had been installed on the roofs of six Walmarts caught fire, causing further lawsuits which were settled outside of court. Amazon were next to come forward after panels on their Redland warehouse in California also caught fire. Since the acquisition, two new products have been released, which many hoped would be a turning point for the company. The Powerwall storage battery, designed to store energy generated by a customer's solar system, and the solar roof, which, instead of bolting traditional solar panels onto the roof, involved replacing the entire roof with photovoltaic shingles to harness the sun's energy. Musk debuted the solar roof in October 2016 at a glitzy event, with the aim to make the panels beautiful, affordable and seamlessly integrated into customers' homes. However, documents from Tesla executives and suggestions by insiders revealed that the tile panels that Musk promoted were in fact fake, and that Tesla did not even have a production prototype, and only began making functional versions of the solar roof in 2019. Musk blamed the production of the Model 3 for diverting time and resources away from the project as some employees were moved from solar to car production. What Musk failed to mention was that other employees who were also on the project were fired. Many customers had signed contracts for the solar roof at pre-arranged prices when Tesla reported an increase in price for installation. Musk said that the company had made some significant mistakes and that the complexity of installation on existing surfaces, such as rotten timbers and non-conventional roofing materials, made it difficult to price and often led to estimates doubling or tripling. The complexities with the pitch or angle of a customer's roofs and plans for wiring also needs to be drawn up. A conventional roof could take three days to retile, 
but the Tesla solar roof will take closer to eight. The price rise results in yet more lawsuits for Tesla Energy, but Musk has confirmed that demand for the roof is still high. Solar City has since fallen below rivals Sunrun and Vivint Solar as America's largest residential solar installers. The two rivals to Solar City have since merged, but it doesn't look like Tesla Energy will be reclaiming their top spot anytime soon. As well as blaming Model 3 production, Musk has also pointed to the semiconductor chip shortage for reduced sales of Tesla's Powerwall charger, with the number installed only 35,000 instead of the projected 80,000. Performance for Tesla Solar has improved in 2021, but the figure is still around half of the solar deployment Solar City were carrying out at the time of the acquisition in 2016. Much of the solar deployed also focuses on traditional solar panels rather than the solar roof. Tesla's pricing option was significantly lower than rivals, but poor customer service has riled many. While car service is routinely available to arrange, solar and battery checkups are much harder. There is no option in the app to arrange engineers to come out, and despite being made aware of this issue, Tesla have not acted. Project advisors rarely answer their phones, and panels have underperformed other products on the market. The issue is so large that Tesla apparently have a team that looks to take down negative press about their offerings. Another problem is the factory in Buffalo, New York, funded by the state of New York to provide jobs. Tesla are currently struggling to hit agreed headcount for the project, which will result in multi-million dollar fines. The factory is yet to become the hub of solar manufacturing that Musk promised, and documents show some solar cells are being produced in China rather than the United States. The state of New York has already written down the value of their investment by around a billion dollars, and there may be more to come. Tesla's lack of production in Buffalo may be attributed to the cutthroat nature of the solar industry, where margins are low, making it difficult to compete with high labour costs that detract from overall profits. Tesla Energy currently contributes little to the company's overall performance, making up only around 6% of total revenue as of October 2021. If Tesla can resolve the problems with solar, it has the potential to be big for the company. There is a lot of interest in owning an electric car from Tesla, and the natural progression is to move on to other products such as the Tesla roof, as well as the Powerwall, which could help the business be reinvigorated. The solar roof is a major project that, if installed correctly and rolled out, could be particularly successful. Demand for solar is growing, and estimates suggest that US demand will quadruple by 2020, and eight times on a global basis, showing the opportunity for growth. Tesla has yet to see the improvements it needs, and the increase in solar roof prices have made it unaffordable for many of their potential customers. They need to make the installation experience better for consumers in order to increase demand. Many are still rooting for Tesla and other solar companies, despite the issues they are currently facing.